Lindsay Ellington uh, is our celebrity ambassador uh, of setting scoliosis straight. And Lindsay has uh, quite a story to share with you uh, about her life and how and where she is today and, and the ups and downs that have uh, she's endured and uh, I think has a really inspirational story to share with all of you today. So Lindsay, please, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Um, so in case you guys weren't here this morning, um, I'm Lindsay Ellingson. I'm a fashion model. I've been modeling for the past 12 years. I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, I was a Victoria's Secret angel, walked in the fashion show for eight years. Um, I founded a line of cosmetics called Wander Beauty, um, and I'm also 19 years post-op, which I think I'm like one of the only ones here <laughs> that's 19 years post-op. So I wanted to just um, tell you my story, because I know a lot of you in the room, you have scoliosis, maybe you're going through bracing, you're pre or post-op, so I hope that my message really um, hits home for you, and I hope that it reassures you and gives you hope. Um, and I just want to say thank you to the scoliosis researchers, or sorry, Setting Scoliosis Straight um, for having me, and it's been such a pleasure interviewing some of the doctors here and the patients and the family. Um, I had a whole thing written down, but I'm just going to tell you my story. <laughs> um, so I was 11 years old when I heard the word scoliosis for the first time. I was a gymnast and a dancer, like many of you guys. <laughs> So I was obsessed with gymnastics. I begged my mom to let me take gymnastics classes. She finally did. Um, I did gymnastics for two years. Sorry, this is going really fast, but just whatever. <laughs> so um, I was doing back handsprings. My back was so flexible. I was going into back tucks. And it wasn't until one day when my coach was pressing down on my lower back in a stretch, he noticed that my left lower back was raised higher than the right. Um, and so he called my mom over. Long story short, went to see my pediatrician, had x-rays done, and confirmed that I had scoliosis. So my, um, I had an S-shaped curve. The uh, top curve was 25 degrees, and the bottom was 35, and that was at 11 years old. So um, screening in California doesn't exist anymore. That's where I'm from um, because of budget cuts. At the time, they were screaming, sc screening um, in seventh grade. So by the time they screened me, I was already, I, I was in a back brace. Um, on my way to have spinal fusion surgery. So I do hope that states, I mean, this is another subject, but I do hope that states will screen earlier, especially for girls, fifth grade would be ideal. Um, so, so basically um, I was put into a brace right away for 23 and a half hours a day, which was um, grueling. I grew up in the hot desert of California. So um, I'm encouraged to hear doctors here today talking about 16 hour, 18 hour bracing and encouraging um, doing activities, staying active, you know, because I, I was, I was, I loved dancing. I did have to give up gymnastics. It wasn't realistic in a brace, um, but that's okay. I'm a little bit too tall for that anyways. So I continued dancing, um, and I would take off my bra brace sometimes during practice, but um, I was pretty diligent about wearing my brace, um, but despite bracing for two years, at the age of 13, um, my, my uh, curves had progressed to 54 degrees, on top and 57 degrees on the bottom. So surgery was basically my only option because um, I was still growing, I was 13. So I um, scheduled my surgery for July 30th, 1998, I believe. It's a long time ago. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I was pretty scared and I didn't have a group like this to reach out to. Um, I, my doctor, Dr. Vernon Tolo, I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Um, he did um, connect me with some other patients who I talked to. And one thing that stuck out to me is um, to stay strong and positive. So I really just changed the fear and the, the mindset that I have, of like, oh, why me, why me, and this like fear, and I turned it into something positive. And I, you know, I started running and jogging, getting my endurance up, um, and just envisioning myself after surgery, just vibrant, active, back on the dance floor, healthy. Um, so I just think that that positive mindset, um, like Courtney was talking about as well, it really does help. Um, so yeah, fast forward to surgery. I've never told my story to a bunch of people. <laughs> fast forward to surgery. Um, I got there and although I was positive, the fear really set in that day. So I was pretty scared. I was actually more scared of that needle that was going to go in my hand right here than anything. <laughs> Um, so once they gave me that and something to calm me down, I was wheeled into the operating room and I woke up. And so it was, it was just really fast. I woke up, um, my eyes were so swollen, I was trying to see my mom. And I remember them holding this little tear-shaped um, stuffed animal with a scale of one to, or zero to five. And they asked me, point to the number of how much pain you feel. 
and I pointed to zero. So I had excellent care. The nurses, the doctors took excellent care of me, managed my pain excellently. Um, I was in the hospital for six days, and I was just looking through a journal that my mom kept to remind me, because it's been so long ago. Um, so that, that Thursday I had the surgery, and by that following Monday, I was telling my dad, I feel so good, I want to go back to dance practice tomorrow. So it was just within five days I was feeling great. Um, it's not to say that it was difficult turning on your side, um, sitting up for the first time, standing for the first time, walking again for the first time. It's, it's difficult, um, but you can get through it. Um, but here's the message. The message is this. In the hospital, something changed inside me forever. Because I was a very, I still am shy and introverted, but I was a very shy, awkward girl. I didn't have a lot of friends. I felt very isolated through this whole process. And this is, sorry, I didn't time this correct at all, but it's okay. <laughs> so um, what changed in me in the hospital is I realized, you know, as scoliosis patients, we have to grow up really fast. And I realized that if I could get through spinal fusion surgery at such a young age, that I could get through anything and so I decided, I, it was the weirdest thing because I remember distinctly on my way from home from the hospital, sitting in the back of my mom's minivan, and I had never felt such joy in my life. It was the weirdest thing. I was so happy, and it wasn't the drugs, because <laughs> I didn't think it was not the drugs, it was the drugs. Because I actually didn't take any, I mean, I'm not encouraging you guys to do this, but um, after I got out of the hospital, I was just on um, Tylenol. I, I didn't take any of the other medicine they gave me. I, and I, I think that's because of the positivity and just like that mind over matter type thing. But anyway, so um, I started with, um, I'm going to be top 10 in my class. Graduated number four in my high school class. Um, continued dancing. Um, I was also the captain of my dance team in ASB. I got into UC San Diego. I had plans of studying biology, becoming a medical researcher, maybe a doctor. But I don't like blood and needles, so that didn't really work out. <laughs> but another door opened for me, and that was modeling. So I was scouted, and um, I begged my parents, and I moved to Paris. And my very first fashion show was for Christian Dior. I opened the show, and then snowballed into you know lots of cover shoots, as you guys probably saw up there. Cover shoots, editorials, hundreds of fashion shows, walking down the runway. My scar was never an issue, ever. Nobody ever, I mean, they would ask me, and I love when people ask me about my scar, my scar because I'm proud of it, and it's a symbol of strength and um, positivity, like I was saying. It's something that I endured at 13, and that 13-year-old self gives me strength today. Anytime that I'm going through something challenging, because um, I'm not saying that my life is easy, you know, <laughs> like, anytime I'm going through something challenging, I remember my 13-year-old self and how strong she was, and I see all of you guys in this room, you're probably about that age. And you guys have that strength inside you, too. So, um, yes, went on to this great modeling career, all this stuff, and then became, um, this is a couple of covers that I've done. Um, so I've been modeling for 12 years, and then, like I said, I founded a line of cosmetics. We launched on QVC. We're down in Sephora. It's called Wonder Beauty. Um, so that's my message is just stay, stay strong, stay positive. This is, um, like another doctor was telling me today, this is just a bump in the road. And then you're going to go on to do amazing things. But the great thing about us as scoliosis patients is that we have so much strength. And um, going through bracing and spinal fusion surgery really helps you to, to develop this depth of character that convinces you that you can do anything you want in life. So that's my message, and I hope that helps you. We have questions for oh, yeah. Please. Should I stay up here? Yeah, to keep the mic. Yeah. Okay. How about questions? There we go. You're 19 years post. Yeah. 19 years post puppy. So. Yes, I'm 32. Okay. Um, any pain, back pain? Well, um, I do, as you saw in the pictures here, I do Pilates and yoga. Pilates has really, really helped me. Um, my Pilates teacher is um, helping me to strengthen my core, which she says is very important um, in order to keep my back strong because I, I think oftentimes I'm resting on my rods, which I don't know if that's like a thing, but <laughs> I think sometimes I rest on my rods. So you got to keep your core really strong. Um, I do experience neck pain and a lot of tension in my neck, but um, what after a yoga class, it's completely gone. So yoga, Pilates, I totally recommend it. One more question. Do you sure. have children? I don't, and that's another concern of mine. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, missed, I missed that panel. No, no, it's coming up. <laughs> okay. 
Any other questions? Um, like, did anyone ever make you feel insecure about your scar in like any photo shoots or anything you did? Never, never. Never? No, and I've, I mean, I, I've walked down the runway in bathing suits, lingerie, it's been exposed, it's been out there. I remember I did a shoot for Victoria's Secret and um, I was sitting on a chair and my back was exposed and you could see the scar in the actual campaign image. I was like, they didn't even retouch it, so, which was incredible. There was only one makeup artist that tried to put makeup on it and I was like, no, no, don't do it. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> no, going to see it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah, um, scoliosis affects the shape of the body. Right. And how, how did, I mean, I, I guess that was maybe prior to your modeling career or your thought of being a model, but more of an answer. But when that body shape is altered, what, how is it affecting you and, and, and how does it, you know, what, what did it kind of uh, concerns did it generate even back when you were 12, 13 years old? Um, with my body shape changing? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I was definitely concerned about mobility, but I'm actually surprised about how much mobility I have, even though I am fused down to L4. I said yeah. T4, L4. So I'm fused down to L4, which is pretty, which pretty, is pretty, pretty, pretty low, pretty low. But, but I'm able to like touch my toes. I do yoga. I do, I do lots of activities. So I really don't feel like I'm limited, which is incredible considering I have these titanium rods in my back. Um, but w with modeling, it's actually helps with my posture. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I walked straight down, straight, straight down the runway. I've carried some of the heaviest wings in the Victoria's Secret fashion show, and I think I owe that to my rods because I think it gives me strength. Um, other girls are like, no way I'm not carrying those, and I'm like, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, the flexibility is certainly something that we trade when we treat scoliosis for prevention of progression. And that's really the, the big balance. We're gonna trade flexibility for stopping this progression and in fact restoring a lot of alignment. Uh, and it doesn't sound like even with a fusion to L4, it, both curves fused, mm -hmm. you're, you can still touch your toes and you yeah. can still do yoga and you can do all yeah. these things. And people think, things. people think that that's about to end and their life is gonna change in a way that just can't even uh, be described. But uh, so it's, I hope it's good for everybody to hear that your flexibility comes from more than just your spine and your ability to bend at the waist and to twist and your shoulder blades and your neck and all these other things that move allow you to still do beyond normal day stuff. So, yeah. great. Okay. Anything else you want to tell them? Um, I don't know. Unless you guys have one, oh, one more question. question. Keep going. The height at surgery, when you had the surgery, did you grow much afterwards? I did. I think it was a, an inch and a half that I grew. Also, and I, my spine is still a little bit curved, so I'm probably like six feet tall, actually. <laughs> So you gained an inch and a half from the surgery itself. Yeah, and, you grew and I a still have after surgery, not in the oh. fuse segment, but in your legs. I must have grown. That's probably why I have long legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I must have grown because I was only thirteen. So yeah. Probably yeah. grew a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's so sweet. Perfect. Thank you so much. There you go. <laughs> thank you so much for. Uh, <laughs> very, very, very